As Afghanistan's President Hamid Karzai leaves office, the country's infamous warlords are emerging from behind the scenes as political powerhouses, and many of them are even running in next month's crucial presidential election. Many candidates or their running mates have violent histories, and several have been named by Human Rights Watch as human rights abusers, responsible for mass killings during the country's 1992 to 1996 civil war. Some warlords are themselves running in the election. Others are being courted by the candidates because they command strong followings, particularly along ethnic lines. But some candidates say that such a system can't sustain itself. I don't buy this uh, mumbo jumbo that people say that good enough for Afghanistan. No, it, we, t we live in 21st century Afghanistan or, or Africa or the United States. We all are human beings. So good enough for Afghanistan is no more good enough for Afghanistan because Afghanistan needs to grow into a uh, adult country in the uh, in the community of nations uh, and we need to allow every individual to have their rights and and, and warlords and power brokers and uh, notorious uh, power brokers of all cannot allow that sort of uh, growth and, and evolution. Afghanistan's fractured ethnic groups are more divided than ever over which presidential candidate to support. The country's largest ethnic group is the Pashtuns, who make up 42% of the population. They also form the backbone of the Taliban movement, which dominates in the south and east of Afghanistan. The outgoing Karzai is a Pashtun, as are most of the nine candidates in the upcoming vote, although frontrunner Abdullah Abdullah has combined a Tajik and Pashtun heritage.